بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and to bless every single one of us And to grant us every form of goodness, ameen Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam Yesterday we went through the story of the nation known as Ad to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent a Nabi and a Prophet known as Hud alayhi salatu was salam. We heard that they were destroyed with a wind, a very, very powerful wind. And we heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them to the degree that there was no remnants of them, nothing at all. To this day, there is nothing to prove to us that Ad existed besides the verses in the Quran, unlike the pharaohs whom we have pyramids to see that they were there. When it comes to the other nations, there are some signs to prove that they were there. Yet these people were the most powerful. They were large, huge people who were granted lots of wealth. They were granted lots of power. They had made their homes in such sophisticated ways. And they defied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Who is there that can be more powerful than us? Today on the globe, we have forces that claim to be the most powerful. We have nations that are the most sophisticated. We have nations that are technologically the highest and they are far beyond everyone else. Take a look at the nation of Japan, for example. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and may he protect humanity at large. May he guide us all to the straight path. I recall a few months back witnessing what happened in Japan. And I told myself and I'm sure we all did that these are the most sophisticated brains in the world. They have Sony and they have motor vehicles and they have so much in terms of electronic gadgets that when they want to get to their offices they look at the door it looks at them and opens and believe me this is what happens it detects the eye and it opens Allahu Akbar and yet when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in eight seconds decided to destroy a whole portion nobody could do anything Nothing, nothing, not a soul, not a machine, not technology, not a man, not a power, not a weapon, not their seats in the security council, nothing, no. And that is the power of the creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. And may he make us from those who can learn a lesson. This is why whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to see clouds come towards Medina tul Munawwara, his face would change and he would start making dua and he would be worried and Aisha radiallahu anha says that I asked him O messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why do you look so worried he responded saying these clouds have been sent before as a punishment to destroy nations here they are we should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya Allah grant us rainfall of mercy let this cloud bring what is known as suqiya rahmatan la suqiya adab let it bring the rain of mercy, not that of punishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. So when we hear the lightning, when we hear the howling of the wind, we should always seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, the nation of Islam will not be destroyed completely. No, not at once, just like the previous nations. But the pockets of people will be suffering depending on their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that plug in in such a way that we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening we'd like to go through the story of Salih alayhi salatu wasalam. These people were successors after Ad. They were further up north. They were roughly in a place known as Al-Hijr. Al-Hijr, the place which was quite rocky, there were some rocky mountains and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named a whole surah in the Quran after them known as Surah Al-Hijr. And their dwellings are still present up to now, roughly 380 kilometers northwest of Madinatul Munawwara. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been there 
and so have some of his companions. And the story is related to us, inshallah, we will get to the end of it, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. But let's take a look at what happened to these people. After Ad, these people were the, the remainders, they went further up north and so on, they settled and they had children and what have you and generations and they were in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were thanking Allah that they were saved and what have you. And after some time, they also began to get produce, they got gardens, they got power, they were large human beings. When I say large, I'm talking of huge human beings, so huge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their size and he describes their dwellings and he describes the gifts that he gave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says from amongst them there was so much wealth that after some time they began to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they began to indulge to indulge this is why we constantly say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gives us good health when he gives us wealth when he gives us happy conditions don't forget him Get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times of ease. When you are in difficulty, He will come to you. Subhanallah. But with us, what happens? Sometimes we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So next thing, we have a problem. And that problem makes us lift our hands up to Him for the first time in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to turn to Him at all times. So these people, when they began to engage in this type of behavior, they had lots and lots of wealth. They also followed their forefathers. And what did their forefathers do? You remember we spoke about it yesterday. They had these houses on top of the mountains that they did not really live in. And then they had their dwellings in the valleys. These people did the same thing. They did exactly the same thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to send to them from amongst them a man. What type of a man? A man who was also from a wealthy family. A man who was also from a very well looked up to family. Not just an ordinary person from the low caste of people. No, a person who had very high standing in society and community. So much so that he was a man whom they were preparing in order to appoint as their leader. They wanted to appoint him as their leader because he was one of the most intelligent from amongst them. Salih alayhi salatu wassalam. For your information, once again, this story, just like the story of Ad, is not made mention of in the Old Testament or the New Testament because these were Arab prophets who came to the Arabian Peninsula. So for some reason, they are not mentioned in the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Although the Quran says, that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet Moses had warned his people of something similar to what happened to Thamud and the others. So mention is made of this in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا To the people of Thamud, we sent to them their brother, Salih. May Allah's peace be upon him. What is meant by their brother? We explained yesterday when Allah says we sent their brother, it means one from amongst them. It means he was from amongst them. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرُهُ He says, O oh my people, worship Allah alone. You do not have anyone worthy of worship besides Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, this is the same message. The same message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with every single messenger. This evening we came across verses at the beginning of Surah Hud where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about why he revealed the Quran. Listen to what Allah says. And these were verses we read in Tarweeha a few moments ago. Kitabun uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fussilat min ladun hakimin khabir. We have revealed this book to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the most knowledgeable, the one who knows absolutely everything, the all wise, in order that they may abstain from worshipping anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the reason why the Quran was revealed, to warn us all, with the same warning that the previous messengers had come and brought to their people. Be careful of shirk. That was the main message. And that is the core message of the Quran. 
If you are to associate partnership with Allah, you fell into the same trap that shaitan has been using for so long. It beats me that to catch a rat, you still need the same trap that they used to use a hundred years ago. It works. They have not become sophisticated. Allahu Akbar. Have you ever come across people or rats, should I say, that do not get ensnared in that trap? Maybe fish are slightly cleverer. Because now if you use the same bait in one place, they see their brothers are getting caught, they won't bite. The fishermen from amongst us know. Allahu Akbar. So you've got to start thinking of different type of bait. But shaitan uses the same plan and he's hooking man one after the other. They're biting, they're biting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, man, we've given you these stories of the previous nations for you to abstain from it. Now, when we talk about shirk, some people start saying, what? Everything is shirk. How can you be saying that this is shirk, that's shirk, that's shirk? Well, it's better to be on the safest side because then we'll be saved. But the moment we are now entering gray territory, for what? The Quran is clear, cut, worship Allah alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Saleh told his people, look at the gifts of Allah upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established you on earth and he has granted you growth on this earth. And he has granted you multiplication. So seek forgiveness to Allah and return to him. This is yet another messenger who is making mention of both istighfar as well as tawbah. To repent and to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your call. He will answer your dua. Allah is indeed very near and he will respond. Many of us, we make a dua, then we say, Allah is not answering my dua. Allah is not answering my dua. But there is a narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which says, how can there be a man who is raising his hands so high in the skies and asking Allah, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, wa malbasuhu haramun, wa mat'amuhu haramun, wa ghudhiya bil harami, fa anna yustajabu li dhalik. His food is haram, his clothing is haram, his drinking is haram, he has been nourished with haram. How does he expect a response? This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. So sometimes we need to look into our own selves. When we call out to Allah, a true mu'min will feel in his or her heart that Allah has heard my dua. He will feel it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَسْتَعْجِبْ All of you will be responded to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for as long as you don't make haste. So the Sahaba say, وَمَا لِسْتِعْجَالُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ What is it to make haste? What is that? He says, أَنْ يَقُولَ أَحَدُكُمْ دَعَوْتُ فَلَمْ يُسْتَجَبْ لِي when you start saying that I have made a dua, but I still don't have a response. Then you are trying to jump the gun. So don't jump the gun. Don't make haste. Allah will respond. Keep on making that dua. When the messengers made dua, they made a dua. Allah responded, but they sacrificed their whole lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there were some messengers, we will get to them, inshaAllah who made dua and repeated the dua until a day came when Allah responded. Sometimes it was not almost spontaneous, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to prove something. So it's important for us never to lose hope. But remember, if you want your dua to be accepted, we'd better engage in istighfar first. When you engage in istighfar first and repent first, and then you ask Allah, whatever you want, there is a greater likelihood of that being answered almost spontaneously. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their houses were so big. They used to carve out of the rocky mountains their homes that they felt so secure in. Subhanallah. Imagine a rock, a boulder, a mountain like a boulder. And here comes a man and with his thumb, as though this is the play-doh that the children play with. And he is just, you know, pushing it. And there is something just like play-doh, a cavity being created because of his thumb being pushed in to a rock. That's how powerful they were. 
And Allah says when they made their houses of rock at the top of the mountains, they felt so secure. What did they begin to say? Nothing can harm us. Not at all. Remember those titanics and those challenges that have been destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People need to learn a lesson across the globe. The minute you try to defy the maker, it's no go area. Nothing. No matter how sophisticated you are, no matter how high in technology you are, when you utter words of blasphemy, it is the end of the road. Finished. The chapter closed. Allahu Akbar. And Allah has shown us this in the past and in the present. Whenever people have uttered words of this nature, they have been destroyed. As we said yesterday, the word used was destruction to smithereens. You know what Allah says about the people of Aad? The wind that blew, that tornado, the fierce wind, every single thing that it touched, it destroyed it to smithereens. Ramim meaning complete destruction, although as though it was already decomposed into the ground. That's the wind. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. So Allah says that these people had homes, they felt so secure. What will destroy us? Nothing. The wind will not destroy us because this is rock. Listen carefully because at the end we're going to need to remember what was said now. The wind won't destroy us because this is rock. The water cannot destroy us because this is at the top of the mountain. And what else can destroy us? If the earth is going to shake, this is a rock. It will remain in one piece. It can't destroy us. So they were happy. Aminin. They felt very secure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salih alayhi salam, who was also from a wealthy family. He was a very strong man, extremely intelligent, very, very bright. And they knew it because they were preparing him to become a leader. He said, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ صَالِحٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ he says, or the, their brother Saleh told them, are you not going to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you fear a punishment that will come to you? Inni lakum rasoolun ameen. I have been sent as an honest and trustworthy messenger unto you. Fattakullaha wa ati'oon. So fear Allah, fear your maker and follow what I have to say because I have his message. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I am not asking from you any cent, nothing, no recompense at all. My reward will be with Allah. Look, we get to that point again. Every messenger is saying, I don't want anything material from you. They did not to the degree that the Prophet ﷺ says, with us, the prophets, it is prohibited to eat a charity. We're not allowed. You cannot give a charity to the messenger or to his family members. No. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Quran of how the religious folk of other faiths have made their religion a money-making racket. Literally. You enter that church, for example, you pay so much, the richest person there is the priest or the bishop. Loaded, mashallah. That is why nowadays in our countries, if a person doesn't have faith and belief and they want to become rich, first thing you do, open a church. Allahu Akbar. It's better than a tuck shop, better than anything else. Believe me, better than dealing in the stock market. Allahu Akbar. So for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us to say the true men of religion, they will not be greedy. They will not be people running after wealth. Allah will take care of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter that they looked at him and they were shocked. Shocked, why? Listen to what they said. Allahu Akbar. They said, Oh Saleh. We had so much hope in you. We were busy preparing you to make you our leader. How can you now come to us and stop us from what our forefathers have been doing all along? We had hope in you. Now you decided to become a priest. You decided to become someone who wants to preach to us. You're claiming to be a messenger. 
So they lost hope in him. But they had hope moments before he uttered those words. What happens to us? My beloved brothers and sisters, a lesson to be learnt. Sometimes you have an intelligent child. You send him to become a doctor. Why? He's too sharp. And then you have one who's struggling at school. Ah, he must become a sheikh. Let him send him to the... To the. No. Allahu. Am I right? Let's be honest. Let us face the facts. And wallahi, if you find an intelligent child wanting to turn to become a sheikh, for example, people at, in some homes, they'll discourage. No, no. What are you going to earn? I know of cases myself of people who've been so fortunate, so fortunate in that they were inclining towards studying the religion their parents stopped them and blocked them and said what you're going to earn until they convinced them that you know what these molanas that are here they don't have any money look at their cars they're all driving little toyota corollas of 1996 yes that's the statement being made exactly what they told salih alayhi salam look at it being repeated again ya salih qad kunta fina marjuwan qabla hadha oh salih you had such good education, meaning you were top, you so intelligent and so on. We had so much hope in you. You want to choose this path? Why don't you choose our path? We'll make you loaded. Allahu Akbar. Look at that. Look at the statements. We need to learn to encourage our children. And we need to know that wealth is not everything. There are people who have reserved their places in paradise, who have never lived in a home. They've only spent their time under the trees and in tents. Because Jannah and Paradise is not reserved for those who had money in this world. No. We will be happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sustenance that is good for us. And may He grant us, inshallah, a comfortable life and a comfortable akhirah. Amen. See, the Amin is loud, mashallah. We said that yesterday. And wallahi, it's a fact. And it's good. It's very good that we say it loudly because we need it, inshallah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they told him, are you telling us that we should leave what our forefathers have been doing all along? We have doubt in what you're saying. You're not telling us the truth. We have doubt. We are in doubt regarding that which you are calling us towards. We are in clean doubt. So he continued telling his people, look, my people, don't be in doubt. I am the messenger and I'm warning you that worship Allah alone. What are you going to lose? What are you going to lose? I'm telling you, worship your maker. You can enjoy what you have, but worship your maker. Stop worshiping idols. Stop worshiping people and do not worship the rich from amongst you because they had a problem. They used to worship the rich from amongst them. And this is mentioned in the Quran. They used to worship the rich, whatever the rich said. Everybody was running in that direction. Why? Because they were loaded. I made mention of it a few days ago that sometimes your business partner can control you as a human being because you're making money through him. So let's be careful. When we're making money through someone, they should not control you to the degree that you now earn the anger of Allah and you are blinded religiously just because the man or the woman you've made money through is now your big boss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding that he is the supreme boss. Amen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He reminded them, وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلَكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عَادٍ وَبَوَّأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْ سُهُولِهَا قُصُورًا وَتَنْحِتُونَ الْجِبَالَ بُيُوتًا فَاذْكُرُوا آلَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْثَوْا فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ Oh my people, remember that Allah has made you successors after the people of Aad whom He destroyed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you so much that He has given you abodes in this, on this earth such that you have taken homes, you have built your castles in the valleys. And on top of that, you have these resorts or these huge palaces that, that are made of rock in the top of the mountains, on the tops of the mountains. So my people, remember, turn to Allah. What he did to Ad, it is not impossible that he can do it to you. 
What was the response? They began to say that you are a madman. You're a magician. You're a madman. The same. This man is mad. This man is a magician. These were different people, but look as though they were trained in the same varsity. As though they were trained in the same college. Why? Because their lecturer was Shaitan. Really? Shaitan Iblis, what did he do? Listen carefully because he does it to us. He's seen that this plan works. Let me use it again. Exactly the same plan again and again and again and again. And it kept on working and it is working to this day with many people around us. May Allah safeguard the Muslim Ummah. And may he grant hidayah to those who don't see the light. So let's never fall prey to shaitan. Same plan used again. This is why it's repeated in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالُوا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مِنَ الْمُسَحَّرِينَ You are a person who's a magician. You're doing, you're casting spells on people because there were some people who started listening to him. Few people started listening to him. And he started having a following. Salih alayhi salatu wasalam. But who were they who followed him? The poor. Those who did not have authority. Because remember one thing, when a person doesn't really have much, by him following the right path, he knows he's not going to lose anything material as it is he doesn't have much but when someone has a lot a lot and he is being told to change his whole lifestyle he thinks to himself but i'm going to lose all this as it is i'm sitting comfy alhamdulillah i'm very comfortable everything is okay here so why should i change remember that is when we should be changing for the sake of allah we won't lose anything we will in fact build our akhirah so then they told him a man just like us, one of us, we should follow him? No, this is a human being like us. What's the difference between us and him? Same thing, like the previous nations. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on top of that, they said, You are a human being just like us, and we want to ask you something. If you are truthful, O Saleh, we want you to bring us a sign. We want a sign. If you are truthful, we want a sign. What type of a sign? Well, we will decide what sign and we're going to get back to you. Imagine they want it according to them. We want a sign and we will get back to you. Introducing the top-rated Islamic app in the world, One Islam TV. The app offers a smooth, immersive viewing experience with user-friendly features and seamless interface. Discover the power of technology for the purpose of spreading the light of Islam to every corner of the world. Download the One Islam TV app now. Mm -hmm.